there are seven forms of eating driven behaviors known as type of hunger. What if I told you that not all forms of hunger are the same or created equal? We are driven to eat for many different reasons. We know a potent driver that leads us to eat is physical hunger, but not all of these will come from physical hunger. We'll talk about seven types of hunger. Understanding this will be a game changer for you when it comes to identifying what your body needs and eating with the right intention. Number one is physical or biological hunger. Number two is taste hunger, which sounds good, tastes good, they're known as cravings. Number three is emotional hunger. Emotional eating, which could be related memories or related eating, and I'll talk about that later. Number four, practical hunger. Number five, habitual hunger. Number six, deprivation hunger. And number seven, social hunger. Let's start with number one, physical hunger. This is a type of hunger that everyone pretty much associate with physical sensations of being hungry. You actually feel that rumbling in your stomach. Here is your body communicating to you that it needs fuel. You'll get some classic signs of hunger, like your stomach growling, some headache, dizziness, fatigue, irritability, lack of concentration, or even ability to focus. Maybe you're thinking about food a lot more. That means it's time to eat. The second type of hunger is called taste hunger. And this is when you are likely not physically hungry, but maybe you see a smell or you are presented with something that you just can't feel it in your bones, brings up some cravings and desire for eating, something that just generally tastes so good that you just want some of it. This kind of hunger is also communicating a need, maybe not necessarily a physical need, but it could be a mental need and honoring these cravings sometimes is the right answer, sometimes may not be. Honoring of these cravings sometimes may prevent binge eating episodes or we're eating impulsively and desperately from happening because you have been pushing your cravings off and off and off. And at some point, eventually we will create more that need for having something because of that deprivation feelings around that food. You're allowed to enjoy food just because it tastes good. That's the only reason you want to eat it. You're allowed to do that. Remember, there are no good or bad foods. They're just bad portion sizes. Let's talk about the third type of hunger. And this is emotional hunger. This is a type of hunger that someone typically resonates with if they are emotional eaters. With this, you are using food to cope or respond to an emotion. Within this category, I want to talk about two subtypes. Subtype A is that association of eating or eating in response to attempt or reviving an old beautiful memory. Certain smells or meals can trigger a fond memory, even subconsciously, which makes you want some of that and head right into the kitchen and prepare that beautiful food. The subtype B is eating in response to a negative emotion, uncomfortable situations, or something that is just doesn't feel right but you just learned that that's your go-to to soothe that need to soothe that discomfort so that could be stress frustration loneliness anxiety disappointment and i do want to mention that food sometimes can be acceptable coping mechanism for emotions but i don't think it is the only way that you should use to cope with emotions. It's okay to, f to use food to regulate your emotions when this happens occasionally, but not all the time. It might be time for you to look into expanding your coping mechanisms in the first place. Fourth type of hunger is one of my favorite. I call it practical hunger. And here you're likely eating in absence of physical hunger, but you are attempting to be clever and practical by planning ahead and anticipating you'll get hungry eventually later on the day but you won't have access to food or the options available will not be the best options for you or best aligned with your goals you will eat ahead of time even if you're not hungry but you will have a much better successful day and i do this all the time before heading to my six seven hour shift at the hospital and even though I'm not that hungry, I know I won't eat 
during the shift. And I prefer having a big meal and I feel like I can hold it throughout the day and then have my bigger meal at night. And this is practical hunger because it helps your body to feel nourished, satisfied and helps you regulating adequate eating patterns. Even if your schedule can be kind of crazy, that is why intuitive eating is more than just listening to your body. Now let's talk about number five, which is habitual hunger or eating out of habit. Do you often catch yourself wanting to have something sweet after dinner just because that's what you've always done? Like grabbing the tub of ice cream because you are on autopilot mode rather than eating out of actual physical heat or actual physical hunger. And this type of driven behavior can also come from an old trauma or old coping mechanism that it kind of became your familiar coping mechanism and your go-to and sometimes it may just be that you just do it because that's what you do in every situation not because it's now a response to a negative emotion but because it's habit in this type of eating driven behavior i recommend you to self-check in and ask yourself if eating at that point in time is aligned with your goals or is going to make things harder if the answer is the last one Find another activity and then check in again. If you still want the ice cream, then just choose to eat it mindfully and move on. Number six, the privation hunger or eating in response of restriction. When I began to listen to my body and feel it accordingly, there were times when I felt like I couldn't stop eating certain things, especially those foods that I would tell always myself that they were off limits because they were bad foods. Pretty much the result of all or nothing mindset. My body was responding from feeling deprived for so long and my body thought I was going to deprive it again of those foods and wanted me to be prepared and getting as much as I possibly could in a shortest amount of time before I could have it again. However, once I allow it to be part of my diet unconditionally, This uncontrollable desire of eating and feeling deprived disappeared. And last one but not least, social hunger or eating with others to celebrate just because you want to share an experience that is part of human being. And you may not be hungry, but you still have that little piece of cake, that little experience, and that again is totally fine. This is another one that can be looked at the length, with the lens of practical hunger. If you feel eating can be part of the social experience, but it's not the main focus or the main experience, you don't need to go as hungry or be fully focused on the meals. Make sure you are nourished throughout the day and that you don't go hungry. So on the event, you can actually focus on the main goal, which is socialize, create memories, and not on the food itself. Out of all of these seven types of hunger, think about what questions you have about this type of hunger do you resonate with. I see you in the next one.